Oh, I cannot wait. This is going to be a phenomenal match with just everything on the line. I, it, it's going to be exciting. Let's take a look at these opening hands here. Pretty neat from both players. So we should have a good old one-two punch with Jaspera Sentinel being able to tap either the Heart's Desire tokens and cheat things out a little earlier than usual. Essica's Cherry can come down on turn three, for example. And on the other side of things, we have Lair of the Hydra to kick things off for Arna. Jaspera Sentinel, the first played down on the battlefield. Yep, solid start here for Arne and being on the play because it does have the seating advantage. Nothing really uh, more you can hope for from this hand. This is a great start. Yeah, being able to get things going first is a big advantage in these matchups, especially in the mirror, as you're able to apply the most pressure soonest and uh, hit your opponents in the back foot pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. And this is just a match where Arnie Hushenbeth has had just an incredible year. David as well. But it really is a David versus Goliath kind of situation here, Mer or here, Ailey. I can be Maria too. I just need to get my <laughs> accent going. There you go. <laughs> so here we're going to see Jaspera Sentinel doing what it does best. Are we going to stomp down the supposing Jaspera Sentinel? Or is this going to be a love struck beast token turn. It's going to be Bone Crusher Giant taking care of the Edgewell Innkeeper, making sure that there's no value gained off of the love struck beast. Yeah, I was going to say, if David actually had a viewpoint into Arne's hand, you maybe would have hit that Jaspera Sentinel because we didn't have land number three. But with top taking it, the land here, it is much better to deal with the Innkeeper instead of getting that card drawing engine going with all these love struck beasts. Heart's Desire once more, followed up by a Lovestruck Beast. So things going quite swimmingly here for Arne Hushenbet at the bottom of your screen. David Inglis draws Lair of the Hydra. That's not what you want to see. You want to get uh, some untapped lands going. Those lands are very powerful, but uh, thankfully still able to deploy a three drop here, courtesy of the Jaspera Sentinel. Yeah, it would have been nice to be able to get Azika's Chariot onto the battlefield there, but Lovestruck Beast being able to block the opposing Lovestruck Beast is completely fine as well. And another big land drop there for Arne. Mm. Double red means that uh, Goldspan Dragon can get on down and start slapping. Yeah, I'm looking at David's hand right now. There's really not a clean answer for this Goldspan Dragon and really isn't a ton of answers in the ma main deck as well. So we really might just see this being jammed. Let's see, we're gonna go for it. Oh yeah, it's dragon time. In with a team, okay. Interesting. Now what could he be bluffing there? That the one one's getting in on the action too. Yeah, this one's pretty interesting because it doesn't really bluff the Ember Cleave since you're mm -hmm. only attacking with three creatures. Hmm, maybe just trying to get in that extra point of damage, just assuming that it's probably going to be a love struck uh, block on the on the other love struck. But now David is pretty incentivized to keep creatures around with that Embercleave, but just kind of realizing doesn't really have that luxury to just take nine points of damage here. Yeah, so the full attack in going unpunished there for Arna nets himself a treasure token too, which could represent anything in uh, two mana for due to the goldspan dragon being down and that ability that it grants another tap land for david a little bit awkward yeah you're supposed to draw the green and red source in the form of layer and den right away and then get mm -hmm. the pathways so doing that out of order here Interesting here if you want to just go Heart's Desire into Lovestruck Beast or just get down Azika's Chariot. Either way, from David's side, since you do not have an answer to this Goldspan Dragon, you have to be looking at instead of trying to be defensive and just set up the walls by playing big creatures, you have to go for the win because there yeah. is really not a great answer for game one to deal with this card. Yeah, this Goldspan Dragon is terrifying, especially if there's an Ember Cleave to follow it up. Perhaps exactly. a consideration to just take a peek in the hand with a Valky, but wouldn't be able to grab it anyway if it was there. So it's just like, oh, cool. Yep, I'm dead. 
Yeah, exactly. If you would have known that Goldspan Dragon was in the hand a few turn turns ago, getting Velky out and being able to pay five and turn it into Goldspan Dragon would have been incredible, <laughs> but it, it didn't make the most sense. Yeah, the value is just outrageous <laughs> there. And speaking of value, I did a little research here, and it looks like there was one other tournament that had some higher stakes, and that was the Mythic Invitational, where they played mm -hmm. for $125,000 in that finals. The second, third, fourth, and fifth matches are these four matches as far as stakes goes, which is just <laughs> incredible. <laughs> So an awesome spot that these players find themselves in, whether or not they succeed in this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. Everything on the line. Everything turning up on a Hushin bet right now, though, as uh, David is able to stem the bleeding just a little bit, but with this dragon continuously chipping in for damage, creating more mana, allows Arna to just deploy so many threats that he's going to overwhelm David Inglis here. Yeah, absolutely. Getting Azika's Chariot and Lovestruck Beast down, as well as just being able to stomp something if you need it. Oh, there's no. a little Hello. bit of hope. And if anything, that is just a nice creature to just play and and say go and try to be yep. the uh, be the defender here. But at that point, without having land number five being untapped, Jaspera Sentinel is tapping down not only itself, but one additional blocker. And then you have three blockers up against just an army from Arne. <laughs> Arna's army. Yeah, there we go. Look at my dudes. <laughs> so many creatures on this side of the battlefield. And we I can't mean, even forget, we got a layer down there as well, mm -hmm. plus the stomp to put David to effectively eight. Yeah, we'll just move a, a creature out the way. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's like there's several ways to skin a cat. Sorry, cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. So it's brutal here. You almost just have to assemble some more blockers on the ground first, because as it stands, if you make this gold span play, Arne could stomp to the face, and then if you top deck a land, it's exactly eight damage coming through, if my math is correct. So it, it, you might just have to get a Zika's Chariot down so you make sure the ground attackers aren't really getting in there. Yeah. And then try to gold span next turn as a block. Or there's another option of just trying to go aggressive here and hoping that a double attack with Emberclave is good enough. And it doesn't look like it is at the moment. Yeah, very uh, stressful decision here for David Inglis, no doubt. I like the idea of just getting Essica's Chariot down and then trying to just shove your way to victory next turn. The Despair Sentinel can jump in the way of a Goldspan Dragon. It wouldn't stop an Embercleave attack, though, but it can protect at least this turn, and hopefully then land number five is found. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Embercleave from Hushenbeth, and, and the game's just over at this point, and David definitely knows that. So that's a card. He's not even going to be playing around at this point. You really don't have the luxury to do mm -hmm. so. So we'll see if we see a stomp on this Jaspera Sentinel to prevent that line of being able to block it to for mm -hmm. sure put David down to six here. Or if we want to get a little bit more aggressive and try to maybe uh, crew up the chariot and, and really get in there. But we will see. Yeah, there's a consideration to stomp pre-combat and then get the Bone Crusher Giant down to crew the cat. But then the car will just die to the Love Struck Beast is, you know, it's pretty much playing with your... Yep. All the information on the table. Yep. And Otherwise, that's the... crew the cat and then try and kill the love struck beast there. Exactly. And that's the struggle here is you got to really even out what you attack with. Because if you go overboard a little bit too much, well, all of a sudden you can just get cracked back for lethal on the other side. These creatures yeah. are just so large from this gorilla adventure deck. So just going with the chunkier critters. Goldspan, Dragon, Lovestruck, Beast, and the Essica's Chariots. The other kitty cat is going to get on the action too, as it would kill something on the other side, lest the Lovestruck Beast jump in the way, or the Essica's Chariots on David's side of things. Yeah, interesting attacks here. Lovestruck, Beast, and Chariot make sense because you can just stomp the Lovestruck Beast if it blocks mm -hmm. Chariot, but... Man, this attack really does kind of scream out an ember cleave. So these blocks are really tough if you're gonna if you're gonna keep that in mind, or or like I was saying earlier, if David just ignores that and makes the best blocks, thinking that Arne doesn't have it. Yeah. If you're David, you're certainly hoping that there's no ember cleave 
waiting in the wings here for Arne. And uh, nevertheless, things looking very good here for Arne Hushenbet. Yeah, and it is the advantage going to the person that gets to attack with these Azika's Chariot, being able to mm -hmm. get some value rather than the player that does the blocking with it. That being said, there's some pretty good blocks here. If you go Azika's Chariot plus Jaspera Sentinel to Lovestruck Beast. The one ones, yeah, that's the thing. The Jaspera Sentinel is a little bit more value than... yeah. You know, soaking up that extra one point of damage from Lovestock Beast because you can block that Goldspan Dragon. But it also is representing land number five to be able to play Goldspan Dragon. So it's hard to throw that in front of it just in case the Lovestruck Beast kills Jaspera instead of Azika's Jerry. <laughs> also, David making a very good read there and realizing that if he doesn't have land number five, he won't be getting his Goldspan Dragon out. And we'll yeah, need and that Jaspera Sentinel. That's a really interesting thing, too, because if Jaspera Sentinel and Azika's Chariot go in front of Lovestruck Beast there, is there any way Arne would have that sick read to kill Jaspera Sentinel instead of Azika's Chariot? I would think not. <laughs> that's that's a pretty tough thing to do here. So there's a land. It's one of them ones that hurts a lot, though, so it's not the greatest for David. Yeah, not a great land there. And with all of these two twos and Arne Hushimbeth going really wide on this battlefield, at this point, playing Goldspan Dragon and tapping down Jaspera Sentinel and a 1 1, that's just, there's no way that's going to keep you alive. Mm -hmm. So that play is now off the table. And it comes down to the point where what's the other option here? You get to kill one cat, you get to kill two 1 1s with Shatter Skull Smashing, or just play Bone Crusher Giant. It's looking like any way you toss it here, this is going to be game one going to Arne. It sure feels like that, and don't forget that there's also the Lair of the Hydra down at the bottom of uh, Arna's battlefield, so... Yeah. Yeah. David can make his own land come to life. But it is certainly a very difficult situation right now. Yeah, your land coming to life when you need all your mana is definitely not as appealing <laughs> as it would be on the flip side, that's for sure, Ailey. So he's going to go for Bone Crusher Giant and the Shadow Skull Smashing as a land. Here's Lair of the Hydra for Arne. And does we, he have lethal here? We have five blockers to spare Sentinel to Gold Span. We get another creature to the Lair and the Bone Crusher, and then two blocks on the Cat. That I count five. There's life. We are one short of lethal. Cue the Bee Gees song, Staying Alive. You're doing a good <laughs> job of it. Yeah, we should have that queued up and ready to go, I would imagine. You would so get DMCA'd. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll I'm see scared. how aggressive we want to go here, because now this is one of those lines when you force all these creatures to block, usually you don't want to be going all in because you're afraid of that crackback. But at this point, there's really not a crackback that you can be afraid of if you're RNA. So I would love to see it just get in there with everything mm -hmm. uh, because it forces a lot of tough blocks. One Bone Crusher onto a 2-2. That's really the best block you have. Outside of that, there's there's not too many good ones. 2-2 two -two Cat mm -hmm. to just spare a Sentinel, stuff like that. Well, math is for blockers. <laughs> but in this instance, you gotta just want to make sure you have your math correct here as uh, Arne looks to be sending in the entire team. We'll maybe hold back something here, but uh, I, like, I like pushing the big red button, so let's do just that. Here come nine attackers, five blockers. All right, David, block. And get on in there, says Arnie Hushimbeth. Move is on you, David. What kind of blocks can you do to stay alive here? And a very clever leave back of the treasure there, bluffing that uh, Ember Cleave. But, you know, at this point, David just has to do the best that he can in terms of blocks. Yep, these are the best blocks that David can do mm -hmm. because everything else puts... David into lethal range, so you get to stay alive from here, but Gruul doesn't really have that staying power to stay alive. This looks like game one to Arne. Yep. Oh, man, that's so rough. If he'd been able to get some damage in earlier, we could have seen potentially a Goldspan Dragon into an Ember Cleave swing here, but unfortunately, that's not the case. Arne is sitting in a very healthy 19, and that's going to be the concession. So Arne Hushenbet goes up game number one. 
Yeah, really exciting game there. Just Arne Hushenbeth being on the play, had a solid draw. David didn't get all the lands that he needed, had some of the slower cards like Velky in the opening hand. Embercleave, not exactly what you want on defense either, and just wasn't able to come back from that lightning speed start. So it's all on David Inglis now to get back into this as we see the sideboarding decisions being made here. Oh, no. Both players. Oh, wow. hi. Oh, no. What's up, Magda? How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I would shake my head at that, too. Good grief. Oh, man. That's just so frustrating when you look down at four of the same legends when you're playing for $50,000, a world championship spot, and an MPL qualification for next year. Yeah, there's no way you can keep that. Yeah. As good of a start as Innkeeper into Magda is. If you have two Magda, completely reasonable, right? Like, But having three or four is just far too much for this. And on the All other right. hand, Arne's hand is perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a much better hand. That's and a great hand as well. Both hands are excellent. Considering a uh, hate Twitch chat, you're super smart, right? Someone do the quick math for me and tell me what the odds are of finding all four Magdas in the opening hand. <laughs> Go. Yeah, Frank's got to be in chat, I would imagine. Oh, I'm sure he is. <laughs> but chat's smart. Let's see them do it. Yeah, there we go. Here comes Despair Sentinel down on the battlefield. A perfect start there for David Inglis after the mulligan. Despair Sentinel into Magda, into an Edgewell Innkeeper or a Heart's Desire. I mean, what more could you want? Yeah, there's some games where you see kind of awkward starts by both Gruul decks where, you know, there's a lot of time to develop each each uh, battlefield and stuff. That's not going to be this game. Both draws are lightning fast and really, really good and are going to be hitting hard. Nothing to yes, follow up thinks... here for Hushimbeth is a little unfortunate, but other than that, very good. Can still make the treasure on the end step, though, and uh, offer the trade on both the Magdas if there's no removal here from David Inglis, which there isn't. And we saw how important these Goldspan Dragon, that Goldspan Dragon was last game. Now having a pair of them that can well be deployed next turn already. And then all these treasures that Hushimbeth is creating are now doubled up. Yeah, look at this. So as it stands right now, Arne Hushimbeth's next turn could be Goldspan Dragon, attack, four drop. Which is just insane. Either a Zika's Chariot or a Crowan War are both disgusting follow-ups to the <laughs> very powerful dragon. Oh man. I mean, you you gotta wanna get Edgel Innkeeper out and just get cards, right? Yeah. You would think so here. Getting a little busy with this Magda, just saying, well, you know, it's it's a little it's a little risky for you to want to block this since you have that kind of combo, the Despair Sentinel and Magda. It makes sense that we're not going to see a block there. <laughs> like, I like these cards. They let me ramp up into my dumb things like, oh, you know, double gold span dragon seems good. Yeah, not bad. Edgewall Innkeeper into a Lovestruck Beast and then having two mana left over. What David really wants is a removal spell. Bone Crusher Giant would be huge. Oof, not mm -hmm. it. Now Arne can make that really sick play. Edgewall Innkeeper and Lovestruck Beast, you're generally pretty happy to see them, but uh, it's not to be as we do see the tap there on the end step. Magda generating that treasure. Oh, this is going to be so gross. Yeah, Are you ready is... for the grossness? I am indeed ready for the grossness. And here's the thing. Maybe you're a little afraid to play Goldspan Dragon because if there is a red cap melee, mm -hmm. that's going to happen in combat. And all of a sudden, you're just going to have two mana worth of treasures. But with having two of them, I think you're just really priced into making this play and it's going to work out huge for Arne. Yeah. Gotta risk it for the biscuits. Let's get frisky. Swinging on in with a gold span dragon. Avantage, Monsieur Hushenbit. Currently, with the uh, Bone Crusher Giants available and the Acroan War online, courtesy of the gold span dragon. So let's yoink something over this side. Oh, and that's just incredible right now. A Crow and Ward being able to take, like, let's say the Lovestruck Beast as a good blocker so you can bide time mm -hmm. until Chapter 3. Then even if you lose Jaspera Sentinel, which would be very valuable to tap Lovestruck Beast before Chapter 3, we've seen this play uh, happen time and time again, you still got the Azika's Chariot to make that play a little bit later. So this, this yeah. turn was unbelievable for turn 3. Oh, hey, Ox. Hmm. 
don't think it's ox time yet. We've got uh, Edgeral Innkeeper that can get an additional card off of the Lovestruck Beast. Along with the other Eddie. Oh boy, but this is going to be mm -hmm. big trouble for David Inglis as he's going to be forced to attack next turn. Yeah, now David is in that really, really rough squeeze here where it's like, I have three creatures that are going to die to chapter three of the Akroan War. Like, you want to just not play anything, but you don't have the luxury to not play anything up against a board that you're also getting pressured. So we're going to see just Lovestruck Beast being cast. Hope to draw something to interact with this Goldspan Dragon. And if we don't find anything, it's going to be very rough. All right, Bone Crusher Giant can kill something. Oh my goodness me. And I think you're going to be pretty interested to Bone Crusher Giant, the Jaspera Sentinel, so you can hope to get that Lovestruck Beast back. But another Goldspan Dragon next turn. I guess, I, I guess if this Jaspera Sentinel and Magda get broken up here, then the play for next turn for Hushimbeth looks a lot worse. We'll see if David recognizes that as well. You know what I want to see? Amber ah. Cleave off the top. Le Cleave to just finish yeah. it out and send Arne to the world championship? Yeah, why not? Leave in the Cleave. Yeah, as it stands right now, I don't even know if he really needs it. He's so far ahead just with, honestly, the Akroan War. That start was unbelievable, yep. the, but the Akroan War is so good in these post-board games. Just goes to play it. Okay, there's another land, just bear a sand snow, and another ox. Well, excuse me, the ox just hanging out in hand. He'll hit the board in a few more turns, if there are a few more turns to be had. Let's see what the draw is here for Arna once... Any combat happens, it's just Vera Sentinel. Yeah, and here's the thing, we can get another Goldspan Dragon into play and drop a four drop, you know, kind of deja vu to the last <laughs> turn that we saw from Hushinbeth, but oh, it worked last turn. I think it's gonna work again. And, you yeah. know, the flip side of that is the amount of attackers that, attackers that David has, maybe if he draws Embercleave and Arna gets a little too aggressive, we yeah. could see this flip the other way. Certainly could. So big decision here for Arna. Does he believe in David Inglis cleave? <laughs> is the question. So it looks like I'm counting. We're gonna we're able to get up to ten total mana from Hushinbath here. <laughs> Five would be Goldspan Dragon, four would be Azika's Chariot, and just Bear Sentinel. So on, on surface value, you can go Goldspan Dragon, attack with both of them, play Azika's Chariot, play just Bear Sentinel. Have a Love Struck Beast back, two cats, Chariot, and Jaspera as blockers, and that seems very difficult to overcome. That's disgusting. <laughs> it really is but disgusting. I, I, I kind of love it. It's it's kind of that gross thing you just see happening, and you're just like, ew, I love it. Oh, double gold span, Dragon Woes here for David Inglis. Here comes Jaspera Sentinel and Essica's Chariot. So two kitty cats on the battlefield, double dragons flying in the air. Is there anything that David Inglis can do in this situation? Finds another love-struck beast. It's not the worst, but needs to deal with these freaking dragons, man. And may I remind everyone, that was turn four of Arne's, Hushimbeth's turn. turn. Look at these boards. Four. <laughs> what? Yeah, both what? of these, both aye, of aye, these aye. decks really fired on a high level. And just Goldspan Dragon has been the difference in both of these games. Just really not being any great blockers, even though the battlefield has been gummed up as far as just the regular attackers. Oh, goodness me. Is there any out here for David Inglis? Needs to deal with at least one of these dragons. Does have Shadow Skull Smashing. Could get up to four mana to deal with one of them. But he has to, he has to attack this turn. Yeah, not only do you have to deal with one of these Goldspan Dragons to just not die next turn, you also yeah. have to come to the reality that all of your creatures are gone except to just spare a Sentinel and whatever you play this turn, which mm -hmm. naturally is going to be chump blockers. And we see Arne already put a stop during his main phase, not forgetting the trigger to yeah. tap this Lovestruck Beast, which could be the difference. Yep. Very aware of that little interaction. Edgewell Innkeepers doing their last bit to help out David Inglis here. And I think staying alive involves some red cap melees, and if not multiple of them, this just doesn't look like there's any way out for David. Mm -mm, hasn't found it, so we're going to see a block tendered here on this Bone Crusher Giants. A couple of chumps. The 5-5 five five looks like it's going to come on through. Wouldn't be dead to an Ember Cleave even if David had one. Uh, 
Ouch. Double checking all the math to make sure there's not some weird scenario where David could pick up 18 points of damage here. I didn't <laughs> count it either. And this is looking really, really rough. It is that. He does have a follow-up play here of another Jaspera Sentinel. So he's going to get that down. Uh, yeah, doesn't Just... even have mana to try and clear out some of the nonsense on, this other, on the other side of the battlefield, so... I'm not seeing a way to stay alive on this battlefield and for some good measure, we have Bone Crusher Giant to be able to do some stomping for some mm -hmm. extra points of damage. Aim that at Jaspera Sentinel alone and that's going to be lethal in the air. Arne Hushinbed is going to be the next person going to the World Championship. All he's got to do is get that blocker out the way and we are good to go for Arne Hushinbed. A clean 2-0 here against David Inglis. He is going to lock up his spot in the World Championship. Just a few more checks before everything goes swinging in, a bunch of treasures made, we're gonna create some more cats, why not? And it's gonna be easy as that. What a victory here for Arne Hushenbet. Masterfully oh played. Yeah, just found everything he needed. His deck did disgusting things, and that is gonna lock up his slot in the World Championship. Great game there from David Inglis, but it's all about Arne right now. And look at his face. Look how happy he is. That's what it means to these players. He cannot believe it. Oh my goodness. I got goosebumps. <laughs> I know, same. I just, I was just going to say I got complete chills. Yes. There's nothing like yes, Arne. This. Congratulations. Who's worked so hard <laughs> for so many weeks on weeks of practicing, has went through three grueling.